Let's look in this video at how to use templates in Affinity Designer for iPad. Now these are not the templates that Affinity can save. These are things like um, Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop or even templates you've created yourself in some other program or even Affinity for that matter. But they're usually looking at at this stage uh, things like um, you're importing them from Adobe Illustrator and in this case that's what we're doing. So open Affinity Designer we select open from the cloud or import from the cloud because I'm assuming you've got these things saved on the cloud somewhere. Select the template you would like. With Affinity Designer you can access AI and PS template files, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Now I've got these, as you can see, saved in a couple of directories, PS templates and AI templates. And these are free from Adobe, so you can go and find them on the, on the Adobe forum. They're very widely available. Now the interesting thing is to note at the start, if you download, download these from Adobe, the Adobe Illustrator files come with a file type of AIT, whatever name .AIT, and Affinity won't open them. So simply change their name to AI, whatever the file name is .AI. Change it from AIT to AI, and then Affinity will quite happily open them. Now, once you've selected your file, click to open it. Select the template you wish to work with and open it. If the template contains multiple canvases or artboards, select the one you will use. And in this case, you can see there's multiple artboards um, right down to page 6. But I've selected page 1. We're going to do this little exercise with page 1. Not very complex, but just to show you how to do it. We've already opened um, an Adobe Illustrator file. And its contents are thus. Now I've enlarged it quite a bit, you can see there. In the Layers tab on the right, you can select the text to change, if you want to change the text, which you probably do. When you highlight specific text in the Layers tab, you will see it highlighted on your template. Now I've selected the whole group layer there, you can see on the right hand side, and it's put the bounding box around that group of text. Now you can't change that all at once, and you, you wouldn't want to. But let's have a look at it anyway and see what there is to do. At this point, you can change the size of your text and the font. And you will also see if the existing font is missing, and it often is when you import these files, and you can see it's missing because the font name will be prefixed with a question mark and be red colored. Now you can locate the missing font or you can change it to a font that you do have. And you can see that the font on here is very difficult to read. My eyes, I'm not focusing on the red too well. Never mind, you'll be able to read it better than me on the big screen. But what we're going to do is, to start with, is change that font to one that we do have. Highlight the text, which you've got to do of course, and from the Font tool, select the appropriate font. And in this case, I selected Amaranth. And when you change it, that's what it'll be. In this case, the replacement font is Amaranth, and it's selected. The highlighted text is changed. Now, you can proceed to change all items using the same font. You can see down the bottom, it's Amaranth Regular 10 Point. However, you can locate the missing font and install it. And as I did, it's BBAS New Book. I found that font on the internet, widely available and free, and installed it. A simple process that I won't go into here. And if you look in your interface, of course you've got to get out of your project to do this, to install the font. If you look in your in interface, the missing font is now installed. So you do, and what you do quickly is download the font, go back to your preferences interface, 
and you'll see in fonts down the bottom there's a little cloud and you can tap on that you can find your TTF file the font file and you can import it directly into Affinity Designer. It won't import it into the system, so you won't be able to use it in other software, but it will import it into um, Affinity Designer. If you want it in the system, you've got to do it another way. In this case, now the missing font has been replaced, and you can see all the other lines, they won't be in red with a question mark in front of them anymore, although the text, of course, is red. Well, pink, pinkish red. But the font is now in place and displaying correctly, which is what you want. So when you first open this file, if, you, if your system says to you, you have missing fonts, note them down and go and find them and install them, and then you won't have to go through this exercise. But of course, you can change them as you like. Now, if you need to change your background colour, or the colour of an object in the selection, select the background layer in the Layers tab, and then go to your colour wheel, and select the colour you would like. And you can see I've selected the, the head there, and it's kind of an orangey-pinky colour, and I'm going to change that colour. And there we go, by simply selecting the colour wheel, I changed it from orange-pinky to green. There are other pinky colours in there, but we'll leave them for the moment. Your background colour has been changed. So you can change the fonts, you can change the colours, just by simply selecting any of those layers. Don't forget to save your work as you go. Save your work, export it as a, as a file, and subscribe to my YouTube channel at that address. Or just click on subscribe and like right here on the channel. Thank you for watching.